friends, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about this guy, plywood, or rather plywood edges. So plywood is a really great candidate to use to build furniture because it is strong, it is stable, it comes in many varieties, and a large sheet of plywood costs a fraction of what lumber would cost for that size. The drawback? these edges that were created when all of these layers were joined together to make the plywood core. And depending on the quality of the plywood, you might actually have holes and gaps in them as well. Don't get me wrong, sometimes exposed edges of the plywood can look really cool depending on the project. In fact, I had used plywood edges to create this, which is patterned plywood. This is an offcut of the Lazy Susan and the patterned plywood step stool that I built a few months ago. However, more often than not, you would want to cover up these edges to get that professional finished look. So let's talk about three beginner friendly ways you can use to cover up these plywood edges and when you would use what. The first option is to use a wood filler or a spackle to cover up those plywood edges. You simply use a putty knife and apply the wood filler or spackle to fill in those uneven crevices and holes on the edges. And then you just sand it smooth. The advantages of the wood filler and the spackle method is that they are super easy to apply, they dry fairly quickly, give you a nice smooth finish which is perfect for painting, and you can paint the same day. The disadvantage is also the fact that these can only be used when you are going to be painting your project because you cannot use them when you are going to be staining the project. The second option for hiding your plywood edges is to use solid wood trim. For this method, you just use a piece of hardwood which has the necessary dimension as your plywood. I like to use a piece of one by two or a three quarter inch square dowel when I'm covering up three quarter inch plywood. You simply use wood glue and brad nailer and secure that piece of hardwood into place. You can fill in your nail holes and sand it smooth and get ready to stain or paint. Solid wood trim does have a few limitations. The number one limitation is that it does add thickness to your your plywood or width to your plywood because you are adding it onto it. So you have to account for it when you are designing your project. Number two is that you have to ensure that it's perfectly flush with the edge of the plywood that you are attaching to. So you get that seamless finish. There are a bunch of advanced techniques that you can use like a V groove or a spline, but we're not gonna go into it. Solid wood trim can look fantastic, but it is also a little bit time consuming and expensive because you have to pay for all of that hardwood that you're going to be using. Now let's talk about my favorite way of covering up plywood edges, and that is using edge banding. Edge banding is essentially thin veneer of real wood. It comes as rolls and you can purchase it plain or an iron-on option, which is what this is, which basically has hot melt glue on one side. Plain veneer edge banding can be hard to apply because you need even clamping pressure across the entire surface. However, iron-on edge banding is super easy to apply and is a great option for beginners. The pre-applied glue makes it super easy to apply it and it sticks really easily. All you need is a household iron. One of the main advantages of edge banding is that you can get them in a veneer to match your plywood, making it possible to stain your plywood really, really seamlessly. I have here birch edge banding, this is oak edge banding, and I have walnut edge banding that I have used in different projects. You can also get cherry, and you can also get white edge banding, which is something that you can use if you're going to be painting your project. So the great thing about edge banding is that you can paint or stain your project. All of these edge bandings that I have are three quarter inches, and that's because I use three quarter inch plywood most often. However, you can get them in various widths, and I have seen one and a half inch and two inch as well. Okay, now let's talk about applying the edge banding. The first step is to make sure that the edge of your 
plywood is nice and clean and has no dust on it so just wipe it down and next you want to heat up your heat source because we are dealing with hot melt glue so a uh, household iron works just fine or I have recently started using the easy press mini this is light it is easy to use and it's much easier on your arms than this heavy iron and it gets just as hot as this but if you are using your household iron you want to make sure that you turn off the steam setting because you don't want steam coming out and into your wood because wood expands with steam so you want to set the steam to zero and you want to turn the iron up to the maximum temperature now to apply edge banding you want to place one end of the edge banding on one end of the exposed plywood edge and you want to start heating the first four to five inches of the material once the first section's glue is melted you can move on to the next section once the glue starts melting you will actually notice it oozing out along the edges underneath the edge banding and this is the indication that you are ready to move on to the next section you want to make sure that you are slowly moving the iron along the edge banding and don't stay on one spot for a long time so you can avoid any burn spots. You can also slightly tilt the iron on each of the edges of the plywood to make sure that the glue adheres to it really well. Now when you get to the end of the edge there are two situations. You might be ending there in which case you can simply scribe with a utility knife or just bend and break that edge banding off. Or if you are continuing on to the next stage, you can simply fold the edge banding over the corner and continue to apply heat along the next edge. And the great thing about iron-on edge banding is that if you make a mistake, you can easily go over it again with your iron, heat it up, pull it off and adjust it and put it back on again. Now typically the edge banding is slightly wider than the plywood. So you want to trim off the excess edge to get that seamless look. Now there are a few different options to do with this. The first is using a trimmer tool. You simply slide it across the edge of the excess veneer and it cuts it right off. And you follow that with a light sand of a 220 grit sanding block or with a random orbital sander and you've got your seamless look look. Now one of the challenges with using a trimmer tool is that over time it can build up residue inside on the blade. Now you could open it up and clean it out but it's just a whole lot of work. So over the last few years I have started using a random orbital sander to simply remove the excess edge banding. All you need to do is use a 150 grit sandpaper in your random orbital sander and sand away any excess edge banding and glue residue. Now you do need to be really careful about a few things. You want to make sure not to over sand because plywood has a really thin top veneer and you do not want to go through it. So you want to use a medium speed. You want to go in the direction of the edge and not away from it. And you should be able to get a nice clean finished look. Now the glue residue can be a little bit harsh on the sandpaper. So you might end up going through sandpaper a lot faster. But recently I have found this sand net sanding sheets and sanding blocks and these are easily washable so all you need to do is scrub away that glue residue and dry the sheets and you can use them again. Now one of the questions I get very often is do I apply edge banding before or after building my project? I highly, highly recommend you apply edge banding before you start building a project because it can be pretty hard and awkward and hard on your arms to apply it once your project is assembled. Trust me. So before you start building, you quickly review your project and see which edges are going to be visible. So you can apply edge banding to those edges and then you start building the project. And the other thing is that the edge banding does add a slight thickness to your board. So you want to make sure you take that into account as you are building. So let's recap the three ways you can cover up plywood edges. There is wood putty and spackle and they are super cheap and easy to apply. However, you can only use them if you are going to be painting your project. The second is to apply solid wood trim, which is a great option and it works really well, especially if you are painting. But if you are staining, you want to really, really test out your hardwood and your plywood to make sure that they match once they are stained. And it can be a little bit time consuming and of course you're using hardwood so you have to account for the expense of the hardwood.
And number three is applying edge banding. It is super easy to do. It's very beginner friendly. You get a nice clean finished look. It can be stained or painted. And in terms of cost, it comes in between the other two options. Plus, it is also my favorite technique. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And if you don't have any questions, let me know what tutorials you would like to see next. Or just leave me a comment to say hi. If you are just getting started, I have a whole bunch of tool tutorials that are going to be very helpful to you. So be sure to watch that and I will see you next time. Bye.